My name is John Myatt. In my time, I've been a teacher, a painter, and an art forger. In 1999, I was jailed for forging over 200 paintings, a crime that rocked the art world, and I paid the price for it. These days, I paint in the style of the great masters and sell them legally as honest fakes. And I've started teaching the tricks of my trade to aspiring artists because all painters can learn by copying others. Today, we'll be painting a nude in the style of a French artist renowned for his portrayal of the female form, Auguste Renoir. I'm extremely tentative about making that mark. Glazing their windows to me before this. Hello and welcome to Dulwich College here in London. The school enjoys a long association with the world of art, having set up Britain's first ever public gallery back in 1811. Today, the popular image of feminine beauty is the waif-like supermodel. But back in the 19th century, things couldn't have been more different. And nowhere is this better typified than in the work of Pierre-Auguste Renoir. For over 50 years, Renoir experimented with style, taking contemporary France as his subject matter. But his abiding passion was for the large-scale, sensual, female nude. His models are voluptuous, curvaceous, positively well-fed compared to the scrawny, bony catwalk queens we're so used to today. As now, there was a strict line between apparently virtuous depictions of female beauty and images that were regarded as crude or pornographic. Renoir knew these rules and he stuck to them. His nudes are naked and sensual, but they are never overtly sexual. Pulling off a convincing Renoir is going to be a huge challenge for my students today. My name's Christine Hopkins, I'm from Rygate in Surrey and I'm a mixed media painter. My name's Andre McQueen, I'm from Camberwell, South London and I'm a footwear designer. I'm Alia Gargan and I'm from London and I've just graduated from London College of Fashion in Fashion Illustration. The thing that what I would find the most frightening was anything that involved people. Um, a crowd scene, that would be a nightmare for me or anything just with one figure in it. I um, just would feel really uncomfortable about that because that's just not what I do. I don't do soft curves and soft shapes. What I hope to get out of this opportunity is to overcome my fear of the paintbrush, my phobia of the canvas and to test myself in a way that I've avoided for a number of years now. I'm confident that I would be able to work well with any work involving figure drawing or observational drawing. Renoir's nudes are captured on canvas by delicate brushwork, fine glazes and slightly heightened colour. Well, this is going to be a tricky challenge for my students because they're using acrylic paint and they've got just one day to do the job. Welcome to Dulwich College. Today, Andre, Alia, Christine, your task is to recreate a painting in the style of the great French Impressionist himself, Pierre Auguste Renoir. May I ask you just a straightforward question? Do you like our painting? No. And that's a straightforward answer? Yeah, it's as straight as I can make it. This is so lovely and warm and glowing. And that's going to be such a challenge to get that warmth coming through, mm. I think. Alia, your first thoughts on seeing the Renoir, please? Complete shock and terror at the prospect of having to paint something in this style as it's completely different from what I normally do. This is called The Bather Drying Herself and was part of a series that Renoir painted in the last 20 years of his life. I'd like to point out just three things here to you. First is the way the paint here follows the form. It's thinly applied, almost like a watercolour. So don't worry about putting paint on too thickly. Acrylics actually will be quite useful for this task. And it's very, very soft edges. So when we start the painting, we'll use very light colour and then just work either side of the edge to soften the edge, either side. Okay, and lastly, our model more or less fills the entire painting surface. There's nothing going on over here other than the suggestion of some kind of tree, some kind, she's sitting outside on her towel, 
drying her foot, which you can't see because it's right outside of the canvas. So remember to fill the whole canvas with the shape of the body. Renoir once said that he knew when he'd finished one of his nudes because he wanted to go up to the painting and pinch it. Well, that's your task today, <laughs> to create an image of female beauty so tactile that at the end of the day we want to go up and stroke her. Here to help you with your task is our model, Ali. So, are we ready? Yes. Let's go. I normally draw quite strong graphic fashion drawings with that are very modern and quite stylistic. So something that's completely feminine and classic is a million miles away from anything I'm used to doing. Considering that I'm not a fan of nudes to have the figure covering the whole canvas is going to be a problem for me. I was standing slightly to the side of the painting and there was a lot of foreshortening and didn't realise until I came round to the front that she's hugely wide and I'm not sure how I'm going to cope with that either. Right, your first and most important task is to actually establish the composition and to, to incorporate as much of the model as you possibly can in your 20 by 24 canvas and I do mean as much. A good 80% of the canvas surface should consist of female flesh. And the first challenge is drawing it out. With a building, nobody knows if you've made it a little bit too tall or a little bit too fat, but with a human figure, you know straight away if it's right or wrong. Basically, I'm trying to establish the, the form of the figure. I'm going to find this bit extremely tricky. For all of the students, now is a good time to make a few mistakes, to establish the composition, to push lines around while we have the chance on the blank canvas. Later on, this will repairs of this nature will cost an awful lot of time, but now we can afford to get the composition completely right. Can I start again? Sounds like Andre's taking up my offer. The best way of doing this, actually, is probably should just turn her upside down mm -hmm. and Stop. just rub this out as best you can with, yeah. you know, with anything and just uh, um, establish the head probably first yeah. this time so you know where it's going to be. Don't get too bogged down. This is turning into a portrait. It already. is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Architectural draft. <laughs> well done. I think it's nearly time to um, to put this uh, pencil down and right. to mix me a very nice, soft, you know, something like this thing you're wearing here. This a sort of terracotta colour. A soft. So, okay. yeah, just a, a, a warm, soft colour, and we'll just establish the outline in a warm, soft colour, and then start working in perhaps the shaded areas with that colour as well. Renoir was born into a poor French family in 1841. His father was a tailor. He never lost sight of his working class roots and often used his contemporaries in his paintings. Although he became famous in impressionist circles, he had a hard time finding buyers initially. And by his mid thirties, he himself was having a crisis with his painting. Frustrated, he declared, I can't paint. I can't draw. I am at a dead end. It was his love for one of his models, Aline Charigot, that helped him overcome his gloom. They married, they had three sons together, and with fatherhood came responsibility. He was able to rediscover the joy of capturing beauty on canvas. After all, as Renoir himself said, there are quite enough ugly things in this world already. Do you think it's best to start, I should block out the figure in colour or do an outline first? No, I, I, I think for once we actually don't block out because we're going to use the thinnest, finest brush you've got. Okay. And when we actually, when you've established the outline, we're going to be chasing around a form with the tiniest little strokes of colour like this. And should I work with the darkest colour first? Find the middle tones first, work downwards into the dark and pull it back up for the light. Okay. 
So if you can find a general kind of all over middle tone, but don't don't block it with that brush. Yeah. You know, it, it's little tiny marks touching, caressing the skin. That's okay. what we've got to have. Early days, early days, but I think we're starting to see some good results already, particularly from people who really didn't want to do this job in the first place. Andre got a bit bogged down with his, with his initial outlines, but he's coming through that one now and establishing the composition nicely. I'm very taken with uh, Alia's uh, work so far. It, it's got that delicate feel about it, and she's now starting to block the hair shape. And Christine over there, well, she's blocking the background in again, just like I asked it to do, just to suggest that this model is outside, which of course she isn't. Figure painting is always difficult. There are so many things to go wrong, the composition, the eyes, the nose, and of course, the body itself. But the biggest challenge with painting a Renoir is to capture the remarkable pearlescent quality of young female flesh. Images of women were a recurrent theme in Renoir's work, particularly in the last 20 years of his life, when he focused on themes of motherhood and the nude. But he was still very much a man of his time with traditional values. He saw women really as creatures of instinct, and he never admired them for any intellectual ability they might have had. You can see this in his portrayal of the female nude. They're often small-headed, robust women with self-absorbed faces. Now, look, everybody, it's time to stop concentrating on the background and actually get to the bones of the job. Here's your finer brush, your finest brush, perhaps. I want you to use this one, mix that flesh tone, a light flesh tone, and start caressing the body with the paintbrush. Just stroking the body gently, erotically, if you don't mind, with the brush. Just loving it. Just imagine you're kind of feeling and caressing the skin, kissing her all the way over here. All these lovely little kind of... And the, the brush direction will follow the direction of the form. So, sensual, sensual, but not, not sexual, sensual. This is an exercise in borderline eroticism. All of you must at some time or other have thought, Christine, you must have thought, I really, really, really fancy that person. Has that ever happened to you? Once or twice. Once or twice, okay. <laughs> Once will do. Alia? Yes. Yes? You've, had, you've actually been there, have you? You've been in and you've thought, oh, good Lord, look at that. Isn't that person just... <gasps> yes. Yes. I, I would say I have. And... Been. Many a time. Many a time, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> well, this is how I want you to feel about this gorgeous girl here. I just want you to think, oh my God, she is to die for. Your painting is a metaphor for making love to her. We're not talking pornography here, we're talking heightened eroticism. It's actually possessing the model, sexually, if you like, but with paint. Now that's what you two girls have got to do as well. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you've got to do it, okay? <laughs> What I'm finding difficult is making sure that I don't, making sure that I can mix the colours and the tones properly. Otherwise it might be drying too quickly for yeah, you. Yeah, and ending up a lot harsher than that soft look that we're going for. Okay, well I've got a suggestion that might help. Oh. Can I put a bit of this on your palette? This is actually known as lubricating jelly and is used by doctors and other kind of people, but it's water-based and that's what's so useful for our purposes. So, we use it as an extender. And if you want to keep your colours moist for longer, just a tiny bit of that in there will do the trick for you. Oh, I see. And, and it will also thin them down some. It will actually make them slightly more opaque as well. So you can paint it directly... Directly on. ...onto the canvas. Wetter for longer. Oh, Christine, that is so good. That's really good. I'm, I'm not very happy with this, actually. No, but you're doing exactly what I want, and which is right, to actually okay. 
mold the yes. line here. It doesn't look very subtle. It looks really crude and, and that's not what I'm... If you can get the whole of this figure done in that way, in the next half hour, when we come to do the final tweaking, the glazing, overpainting over that, all those problems will be resolved, yet the structure will still be there underneath. Right, everybody. Now, at whatever part of your canvas you are currently working, I want you to stop that, and I want all three of us to be working on the same part of the body at the same time, and that part is the face. I want us to turn our attention towards Ali's face and to try and replicate that downcast gaze that we've got in the Renoir, the beautiful features. He always flattered the model, and he did that by actually softening out all the features. We've got all the kind of normal cues for beauty, full lips, small nose, and lovely eyes. That's it. Andre, you've got quite an easy task here in some ways because the, the whole of the features are sort of compressed into that edge down there. Yeah. Right? Easy, it's not as easy though, no, it's not as easy as you think. You've still got the die cast eyes there mm -hmm. and then got make the, the nose. nose small, you know, don't emphasize the nose at all mm -hmm. and just the kind of little pout on the top lip, he always mm -hmm. went for that. Top lip. Well done. Alia, I want you to can really concentrate on this profile here and possibly soften these features, particularly the nose there. Mm. All you need is just the tiniest little mark underneath. The, the, the mind and the eye will do the rest. Now I'm gonna give you 10 minutes on this face, 10 minutes, starting now. Being able to draw faces turned out to be a useful skill when I was in prison. This, in fact, is a portrait of the officer who discharged me. A uh, very nice young man, um, and he um, he sat in the offices, kind of little office at the at the end of E Wing. And uh, thanks to him and a couple of his colleagues, I was able to keep my pencil sharp. And they had one of those machines, you know, where you put your pencil in and turn this thing around, it sharpens them up. You're not allowed blades, you see, of any kind of description. Um, some of the more violent prisoners had melted the end of toothbrushes and then stuck blades in them and used them as weapons. So they were quite hot on any lost knife or anything along those lines. So to keep pencils sharp mean, meant you had to have a friend in the prison officer's uh, office and he got his portrait done for nothing. Um, here's a group of guys playing cards and then for phone cards I used to do proper proper portraits so I'd get two of these which is a week's wage, two of these in prison. And this meant you could phone home, phone your friends. As you can see, it, it, it says uh, for use in HM prisons only. Um, these are actually collector's items now. Andre, uh -huh. I think what you've got to do here, since you've got to define the profile, uh -huh. is to actually use this green colour. Uh -huh. And you've got to define this edge with that green. Uh -huh. And currently, it's just not happening, and yeah. I think that's why you're, you're sort of struggling a little bit. When you've looked at that line, defined that edge, lips, round for the chin, uh -huh. don't worry about pushing things and pulling them around all over the place, uh -huh. then I think we'll start to get that sense of it being a face. Okay. Very lovely, Alia. Just not a sharp tip on the nose. Always softened and smoothed out. All these transitions, just nice and soft and smooth. That's good. And then just gently down here, I think you could just make us a, a bit more in the sense of the, of the, of the eyelashes. Let's mm. give us some slightly more sexy eyelashes. But okay. no hard points. Got it. Now if we could just find a, a dark moment for, the, for that eye. Just take a step back with me and let's just sure. see what we think, shall we? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it's a bit better. It's, yeah, it's much Yeah, are you happy with that now? Yeah, much. Now, all you've got to, uh, what you, you, you need is just the finest brush you've got uh -huh. and just the tiniest moment, I'm gonna leave this one to you, uh -huh. the tiniest moment to find, you see the eyelash? Uh -huh. See how it comes at a, almost at an angle like that? Yeah. It's just a tiny, isn't it? Yeah. From where you Nothing. are. My, you know, your position really stinks. <laughs> We've got to have that in. It's, 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 it's so lovely. Yeah. Right? 
So charge your brush and just be delicate. <laughs> just be a delicate and always be prepared to be wrong because yeah. if you're wrong, you've got to be able to pull back, you know, and fight the battle again. So just make the slightest little marks. Ooh, is this okay? Yeah. And then if it's not, just be prepared to pull back and have another go. Okay. I'm extremely tentative about making that mark. I've done it before and it came out horribly wrong. See, what's happening is this, may I touch your, yeah. it's the cheekbone. You see how it comes up over the cheekbone mm -hmm. here, right? And then that eye, that's what we're looking for. Her cheekbone turns in just and there. then there's just the tiniest mark. That's just it, don't, yeah. just do it for me now. Let's just see it. Go on. And then, go, go on, go, go on. Oh gosh, I can't stand it. And a bit more, yes, good. Now let's have a look. I think that's good. much better. I think that's much better. Yeah. By the turn of the century, Renoir had become an internationally famous artist and the French had awarded him with their equivalent of a title. He'd become a Chevalier of the Légion d'Honneur, but fame and fortune meant little to Renoir as he struggled with personal tragedy. His wife, Aline, died in 1915. Two of his sons were injured in the First World War and he himself was struggling against debilitating and painful rheumatoid arthritis. His assistants strapped his brushes to his wrist so he could paint and they mounted his easel on rollers so he could move it backwards and forward. Eventually, in December 1919, he died and is buried alongside his beloved wife, Aline. What I'm going to give to all of you now is a little bit of uh, extender. And I'm going to ask you, each and every one, to look for the cool moments and the warm moments on the figure. I can see a shadow which extends really all the way from here on Ali's arm, elbow, right the way back for the body. And that, in a sense, makes a, quite a cool moment over here. If you see it as a warm moment, that's fine. Here, where the light catches her, I think we could warm her up, and particularly here, where the light comes over the, over the, and onto, the, onto the wrist and knuckles here. So I'm going to give you a little bit of this, and you're going to mix a warm colour in it, and a cool colour in it, and you're going to float those over what you've already got. And when you've done that, you're going to heighten them with white. That's going to be kind of beginner's guide to glazing with lubricating jelly. But it works. I could go down here then. Gently, you've got to get it. Yes, go on, quickly. Quick. Just stroke it down, feather it down. And don't forget that erotic thing as well. You know, you're kind of stroking the... Sorry about that, but <laughs> we have to cover all the bases at the centre. I see what a lovely, lovely movie colour we're getting there. Pretty much what we see there, isn't it, really? Isn't that just a hint of kind of a purpley movie colour? You've got it. You've got it with a glaze. Glazing their windows to me before this. Um, this is so fantastic, though, um, to be able to alter the colour of something that I've put down. It just gives you so much freedom to change things and introduce the moulding of the figure. Right, everybody. That's it. Brushes down now, please. Well done, well done, well done. Well, what an exciting day it's been. I can't wait to see the end results. Andre, the moment you've been waiting for, your painting in a gilt frame. What do you think? I'm pleasantly surprised, actually. Um, I quite like it. I think I could have done, I could have perhaps got a bit more closer to the Renoir technique in terms of the the brush strokes. I love the way you've got the girl sitting on the settee. I think you're the only one who's used the, the settee. I, I think we could have made the figure occupy more of the canvas, but I do like the way you've started to introduce cool and warm shapes into the glazes. Well done. Thank you. I actually didn't want it to end, um, which is rather bizarre. I remember the beginning, I was looking to end it as quickly as possible, but I was really 
got quite engaged with it and um, I really want to get those strokes that I was looking for towards the end. Alia, the moment you've been waiting for, your painting in a gilt frame. I think it's very Renoir-like be because you've actually captured the plumpness of this girl, haven't you? She is definitely a plump young woman and this comes through in the in the hips and the bottom area and the thighs here there's lots of it and that's what we were hoping to see i felt okay with making the outlines of the figure i wasn't worried about that but i was very nervous about like you said creating tonal properties within the painting itself but i feel i feel like i overcame them and i was able to depict different areas of the figure so i'm quite happy with it is there anything in this process that we've you've gone through today that you can take away and use in your work yourself. It was really refreshing to um, try something completely different and a bit softer so I think I'll try that next time I'm doing one of my oh, drawings. <laughs> wow, so we've helped a real artist <laughs> yes. along the road. <laughs> I'll definitely take away the really interesting way of using lubricant to keep your paint um, from drying too quickly because I had no idea about something like that. Right Christine, the moment you've been waiting for your painting in a gilt frame. Here we go. Oh my goodness. I'm absolutely staggered that I could actually achieve something like this. It's, um, it's way beyond my expectations. I'm actually quite, um, quite choked up about it. <laughs> I think this, of all the students, you, you, the most successful resolution of the proportions of that to the rest of the figure. Also, I love the way that the, the fleshiness of the figure fills the canvas in, in this way uh, that Renoir would have done and I'm very taken with the modelling, the way that you actually model these shapes here, apply these glazes all the way over the shape, cool over warm, warm over cool, and you're starting to get that flesh effect that glazing can, can produce. It's good, it's a result, Christine, and I'm very pleased with you. Well done. I'm so much more pleased than I thought I was going to be. It's, it's, it's just been such a brilliant experience. And the painting that I produced was way ex exceeded my expectations. Well, I'm really pleased with my three students today. We threw the works at them. Challenging composition, modelling and additional glazing. And each in their own way has got a result and created a sensuous, beautiful woman. And after all, that's what Renoir himself would have wanted. André got off to a nervous start, but by the end, he really regained his confidence. Alia will hopefully be able to apply some of Renoir's softness to her future work, and Christine's attempt might even have put a glint into Renoir's eye. For me, her picture is most like one of his nudes. But whether it was the best painting, well, that's for you to decide.